Today we will study some of the important properties of the Fourier transform and their implications as well as applications. Before embarking on this study, so let me explain an important and progressive aspect of the Fourier transform, time frequency duality in the transform operations. We can consider the Fourier transform as a system. So let's denote this system by F. Then the input of this system is a function of time and output of the system is a function in the frequency domain in terms of omega. The inverse Fourier transform can be considered as a inverse system. Let's use F inverse to denote the inverse Fourier transform. For the inverse system, the input is a function in the frequency domain x omega, and the output is xt. These two equations show an interesting fact, the direct and indirect transform operations are remarkably similar. These operations require to go from xt to x omega and then from x omega to xt. The inverse transform equations can be obtained from the direct transform equation by replacing x t to x omega, t to omega, and omega to t. In a similar way, we can obtain the direct Fourier transform from the inverse Fourier transform. There are only two minor difference in these operations. The factor two pi appears only in the inverse operation. This is because of the unit we use in the frequency. So for example, if we want to use Hertz, so F denotes the frequency in the unit of Hertz, then omega is the unit reading. So if we use Hertz based on this equation, so F is one over T, is omega over two pi, then df, if we use, so df, so we know df will be two pi d omega. If we use df, then this two pi and this two pi, they cancel each other, then we will not see two pi in the inverse Fourier transform. For any result or relationships between xt and x omega, there exists a dual result or relationship obtained by interchanging the rows of xt and x omega in the original result. You will see many examples. As I mentioned, we can consider the Fourier transform as a linear system. Then for a linear system, it must satisfy the superposition property. If we consider x1 and 1t and x1 omega a pair of Fourier transform, so x1t is input, x1 omega is output. Again, x2t is input, x2 omega is the output. Then a weighted sum of the input x1 and x2 is applied to the system. Then the output will be the weighted sum of the corresponding output. This is the property of the superposition. We can also consider the Fourier transform is a linear 
Sí, sí. The second property I would like to discuss is that it is called conjugate property. If x t and x omega are a pair of Fourier transform, then x conjugate, x t conjugate, and x minus omega conjugate are a pair of Fourier transform. If, if the signal xt is a real signal, then we have the conjugate symmetry property is this property. It follows from, if xt is a real signal, we know the left-hand side. So xt is the same with xt conjugate. So therefore we have the conclusion. So X omega will be same with X minus omega conjugate. Therefore we have the conjugate symmetry property. X minus omega is same with X omega conjugate. The next property is a duality property. If x t and x omega are a pair of Fourier transform, then if we switch the function, then the x t, the Fourier transform of x t will be two pi times x negative omega. Now let's see so one example. So if we know xt and x omega are a pair of Fourier transform. So now we would like to know what is Fourier transform of the same function, but in the time domain. We simply replace omega by t. Then, based on the duality property, then we know the Fourier transform of xt will be 2 pi times this function. The amplitude will be changed from one to two pi, then t will be changed to omega. As an interesting access, we can generate the do of every Fourier transform pair in this table by applying the duality property. Then I have some access for you to practice. Applying the duality property to the pairs one, three, and nine to show the following Fourier transform pairs. The next property, the scaling property, if x t and x omega are a pair of Fourier transform, then for any real constant a, the Fourier transform of x a t is one over the absolute value of a times x omega over a. We know in the time domain, the function x a t represents a function x t comprised in the time by a factor of a if a is greater than one. Similarly, 
a function x omega over a represents a function x omega expanded in frequency by the same factor a. The scaling property states that time compression of a signal results in a spectral expansion and time expansion of the signal results in a spectral compression. Intuitively, compression in time by factor A means the signal is varying faster by factor A. The frequencies of its sinusoidal components must be increased by the factor A, implying its frequency spectrum is expanded by the factor A. Similarly, the signal comprised expanded in time varies more slowly. Therefore, the frequencies of components are lower, implying that its frequency spectrum is compressed. The scaling property implies that if xt is wider, its spectrum is narrower and vice versa, doubling the signal duration halves its bandwidth. And vice versa, this suggests that the bandwidth of a signal is inversely proportional to signal duration or this. So this is called reciprocity of signal duration and its bandwidth. In the scaling property, if we let A should be negative one, then we know X negative one and X negative omega, a pair of Fourier transform. This is the inversion or reflection property of time and frequency. Then let's use the reflection property of the Fourier transform to find the Fourier transform of exponential AT u negative t, u, u t is a unit step function, then u negative t is a time reversal of the unit step function. We can use this pair of Fourier transform to find, we know the e, so the e negative a t, u t, and one over a plus j omega a pair of Fourier transform. Then we know if we change this t to negative t, then we have e a t so negative so negative t u negative t, it will be u a t, u negative t. Then we know using the reflection property, its Fourier transform will be x minus omega will be one over a, minus j omega. Therefore, the Fourier transform of exponential a t times 
u negative t is one over a minus j omega. So here a is positive. Then for exponential negative a absolute value of t, this function can be written as two components. So one is in the negative time part, the other one is in the positive time part. So when t is negative, then the absolute value of t will be negative t, then we have e a t, then take the negative part. When t is positive, the absolute value of t is just t. Then we have e negative a t times the unit step function. Based on our, our calculation, we know The Fourier transform of exponential a t u negative t is one over j minus j omega. Then based on this table, we know the Fourier transform of exponential negative a t is one over a plus j omega. Then based on the linearity property, then we know the Fourier transform of this function will be the sum of one over a minus j omega plus one over a plus j omega. We can do some simplification, then we can get this result. So this is the Fourier transform of the function. So exponential negative a absolute value of t. This figure shows the Fourier spectrum of the function xt, exponential negative a, absolute value t.